Shiggy Jaguar Radio Broadcast. We are live in a COVID-19 Mercury Retrograde era of broadcasting. I got my brand new mic. You see that right there? I gotta make the duck face. We are going to go to Alan K. Patch here in just a few seconds. The fantastic, phenomenal Alan K. Patch. Of course, you know Alan from his bestsellers. And uh, he is going to join us today here on the old Skip Skype. The old skype rooney as they say. And we're going to be going to Alan K. Patch here in just a few seconds. And uh, media-driven character destruction its nothing new. I'll tell you, I th th that is the theme for this show today. Uh, we, we have had more, uh, you know, we, we had um, the Nooch, as he calls himself on earlier, Dr. Michael Nuccitelli talking about this. And uh, now we have a uh, different perspective. We have our good friend Alan K. Patch. Get more information at akpatchauthor.com. Of course, akpatchauthor.com is where you can buy all of Alan's books. And uh, forget about Black Friday. Forget about third thursday forget about all these other things we're living in a COVID era you might as well do all your shopping online and do it over there at akpatchauthor.com so alan uh public opinion has been manipulated to uh sentence marie antoinette to the guillotine public opinion can be a pulse check of the people but can also be mob rule uh talk to us about the case of mob rule that drove the execution of the french queen Marie Antoinette in 1793. Talk to us about this, my friend. All right, Gigi. Great to be with you again. Yes. Hey, uh, listen, last week I talked about George Orwell and uh, his book 1984, which is about a totalitarian future. Yes. Uh, this week we're going to talk about, you know, how the media can be, you know, used for a character assassination um, and to sway public opinion. I mean, look right now, uh, we're, we're in this period where, you know, emotions are running high and, you know, the times are desperate and uh, you have opposing political parties, uh, you know, vying for power. Um, but I, I, I want to use the example of Marie Antoinette and what happened to her um, during the French Revolution. Okay. Now, um, King Louis XVI and his Queen Marie Antoinette, the, they're the monarchs of France. And... Uh, and they were wed in 1770 as like teenagers. All right. Okay. Now, when we get by, by the time we get to 1789, you know, uh, the, the French monarchs, they, you know, they build opulent pal palaces like in Versailles and, you know, they, they helped us out there in the American revolution. They went into a tremendous amount of debt with that, yes. but you know, they had like a perfect storm of drought and, and high prices and taxes and lack of representation. Finally, by 1789, the street people revolt. They storm the Bastille, um, and they take it over. And uh, you know, and by by October of that year, the king and queen are in Versailles, and now the people storm the palace. And uh, you know, they're going in there and they're killing all the guards. And and Marie Antoinette is alerted just at the last second. She she escapes through a secret door to another part of the palace, and they're only saved by the Marquis de Lafayette the famous hero of our American Revolution. He went back to France. So, you know, a perilous situation. Um, the king and queen go into house arrest in Paris. And that's where we kind of start our story. We have got Alan K. Patch with us today. akpatchauthor.com is the official website. Go over to akpatchauthor.com for more information. And Alan has got a uh, great new book. Uh, tell us a little bit about this book, my friend. Uh, yeah, well, um, this, this new release is called The Catacombs Curse. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about the time of the French Revolution, the Napoleonic times, because that's where the book starts out. And this is sort of a past near future book so it starts out at the time of waterloo in 1815 but it kind of ends up going to the present day or a little bit of the near future and that's where the story takes place it, it happens to be about the paris catacombs and a tourist who goes there and accidentally you know touches one of the skulls there and, and he's possessed by one of these older spirits so anyway that's the basis of the story <laughs> um but uh it's fun to take these historical situations and blend it into what's going today and that's wh why i'm talking about some of the, these stories right now blending today and what happened in the past so what happened to the king and queen here my friend kind of kind of catch us up with all this 
Well, uh, you know, you know, this couple, they're, they're in big trouble and they try to escape to Austria uh, in 1791, but they're caught and brought back to Paris. So by 1793, a couple years later, you know, King Louis is going to have his head cut off um, by the guillotine, you know, to the cheering of thousands. And, uh, but, you know, but what happens to Queen, Queen and uh, Marie Antoinette? Uh, the thing is, is, you know, the king's guilty of, of doing all this. How much was the queen guilty? You know, you know, she, she spent opulent, you know, she spent extravagantly. Um, we know that. Um, but uh, the situation was that she was put into prison and she was kept there for nine months in a little room uh, by, you know, with guards right there. Her family and kids were kept away from her. And, uh, you know, the case was being built against her to uh, execute her as well. So what happened is there were rumors circulated, you know, horrible things circulated about her. Uh, they were, there were songs that were made up about her treason and how she was guilty. And they were distributed by ballad sellers in the streets. <laughs> and wow. so they called her a cruel, vicious hussy and a German tigress. And uh, they even passed papers saying that she had had sexual relations with her young son. So Whoa. the media, you know, <laughs> drove up all this hatred against her. You know, in, in truth, she really didn't have a, a lot of say in the governing of the nation, uh, but she did have enormous expenditures. So, you know, this was during the reign of terror, you know, when, you know, 10,000 people were executed by the guilty. Anyway, they tried to help her escape, but it didn't work out. Finally, in October, uh, they decided it was time to execute her. You know, they cut off a lot of her hair. They put a little bonnet, you know, bonnet on her and, and a white shift. And they brought her out in one of those carts you always see in the movies where people are throwing garbage at them. Um, they did that to her. Uh, they walked her up the steps. She happened to step by mistake on the executioner's foot. She apologized. And uh, they, uh, they uh, used the guillotine on her. Uh, to the cheering of all the people. It's kind of an interesting thing, but back then, <laughs> during this time period, the, the, the most popular toy among children was a little miniature guillotine. I mean, imagine that. That's awesome. That's fantastic. It anyway, is. Uh, eventually, the King and Queen, uh, you know, they were, they were buried in a church graveyard, and, you know, and, and it was all over. So, anyway, um, kind of a sad story, sad ending for them. So what is the lesson that we that we learn here, my friend? Well, uh, is that, you know, media, depending on what side you're on, can be can be support you or it can be used against you, um, you know, to extreme measures. Um, so, you know, we really you know, there's a lot of rumor that's put out, but we you know, we really need facts and evidence uh, before we can make decisions. And uh, so that was a problem then. And it's still a problem today. So, you know, with all the, the fever really high right now, we're just going to be careful about what the real facts are. It is Alan K. Patch. He joins us today here in our broadcast. He joins us live as usual via the, the old Skype. And uh, I'll tell you, Alan, it is, a, uh, it, it is such a tremendous story. And I know that you have got uh, just tremendous books over there at uh, akpatchauthor.com. Tell us about some of the different books and the trilogy and, and, and everything, my friend. Well, you know, it depends. You know, like I say, I like to write about sort of historical situations and relate it to, you know, the near future or, or uh, things that are going on today. But my first trilogy is, was out um, previously called the Apollo series and uh, starts with Passage of Delphi and it's a time travel adventure. This new one just released is a paranormal thriller. And as I described before, it has to do with uh, the possession of a Taurus in the, in the Paris catacombs. The book starts out during the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, and uh, my Taurus, who um, you know goes into the catacombs of the present day, accidentally touches one of the skulls, and he's possessed, <laughs> and uh, everything goes downhill from there. <laughs> But it's a it's it's a it's a fast moving story. It's got a lot of twists and turns. Um, just encourage your read, your listeners to go and read the book and go to go to uh, Amazon and look up the Catacombs Curse. Fantastic. Well, uh, AK, I I appreciate you as always uh, making time for us today. You uh, you always have some great stories and and uh, the books are amazing. And uh, thanks for doing this, my friend. This is always fun. 
All right. Thanks, Jiggy. Talk to you next week. Definitely. I'll talk to you next week. There he goes. Alan K. Patch, akpatchauthor.com. You can get more information over there. We are going to take a brief time out. I think I like this new microphone. I don't know. I may go back to the old one. Who knows? We got more coming up. 